This is a full review of the BMW X7, the bigger brother of the X5. And today here in the M Performance model, a full tour on exterior, interior and the driving experience as usual here on Autogefühl with Thomas in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! The BMW X7 comes standard with LED headlamps and there are already those adaptive LED lamps. Option you can get the laser light, which we also have here, then with those blue accentuations. 600 meters of high beam range in Europe, only 300 meters in the US, so far as it is limited by regulations. Here the M Performance model, the M50D, has a sporty accentuations in the lower part with the spoilers right there. Then the X7 in general gets this huge front double kidney grille. If you look in close up, then you can see that those vertical fins on the inside are closed. They're just open on demand when the cooling is needed. And of course, really upright, a very strong appearance in the front. And the official papers say that this one here is carbon black metallic as for the color. But, you know, from the distance it looks black. But as soon as you approach a little bit closer or if there's a little bit more light, then it appears bluish. The length is at 5 meters 15, 203 inches or 16 foot 9, that's 23 centimeters longer than the X5 or 13 centimeters more in wheelbase and you can see it has a very upright and strong structure in the side profile right here with those, you know, it's really cool when you approach the car then the mirrors flip out and also the lights are activated already here, really upright windows that you have some space on the interior but it's a little bit inclined you can see it rather from the rear very soon. Here the M Performance model M50D gets those contrasting mirror caps right there, the M Batch and those are optional 22 inch wheels and together with the M Performance brake, really cool as for the visual setup, we'll see out later how it plays out for the comfort. A usual X7 would also come with plastic wheel arches here for the crossover SUV look, here the M Performance model with wheel arches in the vehicle color and again interesting how many color nuances this very color has then already here in the side profile again dropping line here just below the door handles and yeah i mean it appears quite massive of course longer wheelbase and also than the x5 so this will also make a difference in driving and there's a rear axle steering available three and a half degrees in the opposite direction or in the same direction as to the front wheels the threshold is about 60 to 80 kilometers an hour depending on which driving mode you are in and this reduces the turning circle at lower speeds and gives you more stability at higher speeds and makes this car especially at lower speeds a little bit more agile rear sports differential also included in this m performance package which you get with the m50d this would be another advantage of course always an all-wheel drive with a rear wheel bias in the rear you can see there an x5 looks a little bit more elegant because here in this rear part they you know try to gain a little bit more space and then you can see that it's smaller to the upper part of the car and that looks i think sometimes a little bit weird well, what's your take on that m50d logo right there with the m badge tail lamps are horizontally drawn and then here on the lower part those are real exhausts on the inside each but then the outer part is this you know a little bit exaggerated beauty tip Engines star. So on the petrol side, there's a three liter six cylinder petrol engine, 340 horsepower, the 40i. Then there's a 4.4 liter V8 petrol, 462 horsepower, the 50i. And we have driven those in the other review. Please check out that link. And then the diesel side, the three liter six cylinder, inline six cylinder diesel, either as 30D, that is then 265 horsepower, or here the M50D with 400 horsepower. And the acceleration figure of this M Performance diesel is 5.4 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And that's the equal acceleration figure as the V8 petrol.
continue her overview. Great build quality, everything is wrapped tightly. Nice contrast stitches used right there. And then also here the whole for my second design feature is the ins of the doors and everything feels very solid here. Matte styling for that one. And this navy interior or a mix of navy and bright looks really very fancy and also fits to the exterior color definitely. So great color choices. However, in most markets only animal skin trim for the seats available. It was said that at some point there might also be Sensatec more sustainable leatherette for the X7 which is also available for the X5 especially in the US. We have to see about that and um, check out how it plays out for different markets. BMW engineers told me that the seats are the same as in the X5 but you have a higher position overall in the vehicle. So that is then somewhat similar, but also a little bit <laughs> different at the same time. M50D has those special entry badges and also those aluminum pedals, for example. Also comes with the M steering wheel, has a heated function and this M logo. And on the left side of the steering wheel, you'll have the cruise control settings right there. And on the right side is, for example, to pick up the phone and also to control the volume. Well, getting aside here is fairly easy but of course you sit quite high have to have this elaborate uh, king of the road driving experience here and you see here when i um, for example start the engine the steering wheel comes towards me that's a comfort feature and overall it also goes down and you can pull it up of course and, and down and inward and outward again and seats also all electric however even though this car starts already at a high entry price you have so many different options in extra that you pay so much stuff more you have to pay attention to that and headroom here with the panoramic roof which is standard there's plenty of headroom still left one meter 86 or six with one no problem and you can open this panoramic roof and has really a wide opening both in um, in width and also in, in the length and alternatively if it's really hot you can also close the shade then you have a little bit more protection at the sun and also you know this top seating here in this case here is covered in dark blue alcantara microfiber this is really beautiful and also one of my favorite features here of this vehicle and yeah such a comfortable seating position in the front interior overview here you have two 12.3 inch screens left and right this is also all standard as it is at least this is standard then we really wrap tighter also for the materials as for the top dashboard and big head-up display i can also show you and the screen zoom more deals to that but it's really very well to see because it's yeah quite large and also the instruments everything you can see when i turn up the engine the steering wheel has a good size also some shifting pedals here if you like them so shift down and shift up that can also be quite fun and sport here then a separate climate unit still here you can control it while driving and you can also use the voice input either with the button on the steering wheel or saying hey bmw please drive me to berlin all right our next destination is Berlin. So like GPS input works or if the engine is running, then you can also have, for example, hey BMW. Maybe it takes time to calculate, you know. Hey BMW. Yeah, okay, so more time, but let's go back to the menu. Then, hey BMW, set temperature to 22 degrees. Okay. I set the there temperature on 22 degrees Celsius. And this, of course, pretty helpful. Lower part, then still a normal volume knob, metal knurling around, some hotkeys, and then this lower area. You can also get matte wood interior inlets, by the way. This one here, like this glossy wood, um, but bright. That's also been cool. Then, oh, inductive charging pad <laughs> for your smartphone. Since you have the wireless carplay, it makes sense. A USB-A device, adaptive cup holders, they can be cooled and heated actually, that's pretty fancy. And this crystal gear shifting knob together with the controller where you can still control the touchscreen from the lower part here. That's helpful while driving and air suspension goes up 4 centimeters and down 4 centimeters, so over a span of 8 centimeters might be good for some so off-road situations and so on. And then there's this middle armrest which flips open and some more space underneath together with another USB-C device. 
he now deals to the screen. When you take a look at the map, you can very well see it and it's also quite responsive. And I really like the GPS software BMW has on there. Usually that was always the most flawless ones when we are on those events. Car settings, that's also very interesting when they have the driving information as for the fuel consumption or also sports um, displays or this X view where you can see like a compass or something. Um, either normal Bluetooth connection or you can have the Apple CarPlay and I'm going to actually deactivate the flight mode here and you can also see that it's um, actually just wireless and um, that's of course pretty cool. No Android Auto yet for the BMW cars. So here we go now with the shortcut to the Apple CarPlay and sound of this Bowers and Wilkins system is a really very nice um, 3D sound all around the vehicle. I really like that. And this is then the CarPlay integration with this um, newest software also, um, iOS. And uh, I would really recommend you to uh, deactivate background um, updates on your iPhone when you have this new system. Otherwise, this it will drive you nuts. We had that reason in the Mercedes and then the Apple CarPlay was very slow. And when I deactivate the background um, updates, then it's all back again and you can work with that very well. So that's a tip from me. You see here this integration is very well done and you can always go back to the normal BMW infotainment system. And very elaborated is this rear view camera. It has a great resolution and also this drone view from above if you want it. There's the reversing assistant available if you want that option that you go back automatically when you went in some narrow stuff and it also adapts here with the helping lines if you turn the steering wheel. And when the engine is running, you can see here in those digital instruments that the RPMs go counterclockwise actually. And in the middle, you can have the GPS view. That's the reason for the counterclockwise because you have then space on the middle part. And by the way, this top part there, it checks you out that you are not tired and then suggests those, those brakes and so on. So yeah, you're a little bit spied on by your own car. And with the head-up display, you can see the current speed, the allowed speed, and also some GPS directions. There will also be some, mm, like let's say, uh, map schematics when you are approaching the next intersection and so on and really helpful feature and very elegant is this normal back mirror here frameless classy and you can have a good view and this is the car key you have this computer key but you can also get a normal one you can close and open the doors or check it out if they're actually closed or open you can see a fuel rate and so on um, for the independent heating it might make sense or something but other than that it's of course also big and heavy you might remember that the x5 which is a great suv in this segment has one problem is the rear leg room and here in the x7 we have either a bench that goes all the way through or this one here the captain seat setup we have in general nine centimeters more leg room right here however considering the length of the vehicle and you look at the leg room you have here of course it's plenty you know there's no problem for tall adults but still the package of this car is not good so um, if you you know consider the exterior length versus the interior space you have but it's really cool to sit here you sit pretty much upright it's also good for kids especially so or if you're not that tall however if you are tall you still have enough um, you know room left here special cushion right there ah, so soft so comfortable and they do cover it in microfiber or alcantara here the reason is that one has direct skin contact and then of course the animal skin is not that good because it's cold and slick and this one here is definitely cozier also in the rear plenty of headroom left that's no problem again this beautiful ceiling and a nice view through the panoramic roof you can as you can see all see it from that perspective if you want to know more about the difference here with the captain seat setup and the through bench you can also tune into all the other video linked in the video description or the pinned comment and the Mercedes GLS um, does offer more legroom for example however those seats are a little bit more turned backwards so you fall backwards a little bit more so I found the seating position here more comfortable especially in the captain seat setup so the downside you will see then in the trunk part very soon that's the, uh, there's a downside to those individual captain seats However, the upside is you have such an exclusive free and cool seating position here in the front. And this is also something special, depends on you know how you will use the car. You can also fold up those armrests right there. Then you have USB-C connections, for example, for those iPad holders, optional, or then in the lower console, more USB-C devices together with a separate climate unit and also some special cup holders which are also adaptive so it's interesting if i want to access the third seating row those captain seats here they 
when you fold them they slide forward and then they also go up just a little bit and then you have actually a quite nice access here to the last seating row the question is does it also fit for more tall adults and um yeah i mean it's interesting here definitely uh headroom wise it does exactly fit well i do hit the ceiling when I put my spine all the way up. There's also an additional small glass roof here also with an additional shade right there and there's also a separate climate control if you like for example and also separate cup holders and you also have a own USB-C device here and well I mean it's actually quite cozy but the question is legroom wise so the thing is here the seat as I have it here put it to a position where I could still sit in the front on those captain seats and then yeah it barely fits behind it and if I would put the captain seats all the way back like the other one then it doesn't fit at all so yeah for adults still quite limited however here they did think about isofix at the last seating row so you can have more possibilities for chart seats this is of course where it gets really exciting 326 liters just the rear letter part and here the split opening where you can also take a seat right here for the picnic for example a small cover right there so this one is the minimum trunk setup here some more space underneath and then there's also the you know, bigger cover available and in this setup here it's still possible to put a cabin trolley in like this that's actually good and then the luggage is also uh, kept if you have some more luggage you have to flip the seats anyway and then you can also use those special buttons at the left side and for example also just press this maximum button and then it goes on to the 750 liter setup like it is right now and the maximum setup for the non-captain seat version is 2120 liters but that cannot be reached here as so you see that's the limitation then here. So those captain seats do not flip. And as for the length, this is here 44 centimeters for the last row. I mean, I mean as everything is up. And then if the last row is folded, then it's about one meters and 20. And then here, I said that's the signal. That is it. The captain seat, they move a little bit forward, but that's it. So if you want to have it all folded flat and the maximum leader setup, then you need the different setup than with the bench that goes all the way through, but then also can be flattened. What about the short safety test? Whoa! Huh? Yeah, not super sensitive, but I think in this case still somewhat sensitive enough. Of course, always cool. Now again, you know, to see the thing closing totally, especially with the split there, it's always a nice <laughs> mechanism. Welcome to Thomas' driving lounge with the BMW X7 here today in the M Performance model M50D. So we'll begin a little bit here in the city and then we'll also drive to the motorway, do a first short acceleration and later on we'll hammer it all the way through and see yeah, what performance this M Performance model can really deliver us. And they do have a lot of petrol M Performance models, in this case then the diesel M Performance model which you know they for example also other offer for other um, vehicle segments that they go for an M performance diesel especially this can be relevant in Europe um, because you do not get um, you know so many you know high horsepower super high cylinder petrol engines here because of the different regulations and therefore they usually say ah you know then we offer a diesel performance model for Europe for example well, and the first thing to notice driving the X7 in general is this, you know, this, this authority on the road. It's huge, yes, definitely, and especially for European roads and you're so relaxed and everything is really refined, how the whole driving experience feels like. You know, at the moment it's no problem, but um, I've experienced, for example, like yesterday, some more narrow roads and yeah, then I felt like, wow this car probably does not belong here <laughs> so for narrow european roads it's definitely too big but as we were driving this one here for the very first time in texas or well, through texas doing that you know, really interesting road trip you should check out that review as well i will link it in the video description and the pinned comment then you're driving through texas like there's not a big car so it's like normal size maybe you know 
no problem if it would be bigger. And indeed, there was also feedback from the US market saying like, why did you make the X7 that small? <laughs> so yeah, it really always depends on the surrounding you're driving the car in. But it's so relaxing to drive. You have this upright seating position. You have the cozy air suspension, which has the M setup here in the M50D. But then again, pff, it's so different. It's still, you know, well, it's maybe a little bit closer to the X5, I would say then, because the X7 in general has a softer setup than the X5, and then here with the M Performance model, the air suspension gets a little stiffer setup um, that you could compare a little bit more with the X5. Um, the X5 and also this one, I mean, they are really great to drive them with a little bit stiffer air suspension. On the other hand, I always say, if I go for an air suspension, I usually want this special air suspension drive feeling and you know the, the softness of the ride so yeah you can you know um, argue for and against it for sure um, together here with those 22 inch wheels you do feel some roughness on the road from time to time going over some potholes or so so for the best comfort I would advise I mean you can go for this model here that won't be such a problem with the um, suspension it's still the air suspension but then again, maybe go for some smaller wheels because those ones are reduced in comfort definitely, you know, significantly, you, you do feel that. You can also pick different driving modes in the sports mode. Then there's even stiffer setup than it. You know, it feels really sporty. That's, that's pretty interesting. The rear axle steering, which is also built in in this test vehicle, does make a significant difference. It's three and a half degrees in parallel direction or in the opposite direction than the front wheels from the rear axle and that actually changes lower speeds it's the opposite higher speeds in parallel direction to give you more some more stability and it changes in the comfort mode um, you know, about 60 and in the sports mode about 80 kilometers an hour so um, yeah that's it's approximately like this 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 range then. So it's interesting that they also adapt the, the switch over as for the driving mode. Pretty, pretty cool, definitely. Well, I mean, it's um, such a cozy ride still. Um, I would go for small wheels then, and even maybe just with normal air suspension, and not with the one in the M Performance model, that you can enjoy the soft ride even more. Because, yeah, I mean, now like the, the road is really getting rough, and then you sometimes feel, hmm. That could feel better indeed if the air suspension wouldn't be a little bit stiffer and also the wheels wouldn't be that large. So if you go for this car, you probably also prefer that. By the way, noise insulation wise, somewhere in the front dashboard there, there's like, I'm not sure if you can pick that out on the camera. Um, you won't hear it at high speeds because wind noise will pick up a little bit. You won't hear it when you play music, but when you're really silent and the thing is, this car is very silent as for the noise insulation from the outside and from the engine and so on that you hardly hear anything and whoa they blocked the road here what the hell is happening I haven't seen that coming but the uh, turning circle is definitely a little bit smaller here with the rear axle steering yet again this wouldn't have worked properly but three and a half degrees then as I said opposite direction and this really helps to make the car feel more agile, so so that's pretty cool. Um, so it feels a little bit smaller than it is, taking a shorter wheelbase. So you can still drive this somewhat sporty, however you still do feel the weight. In comparison to the X5, yeah, the X5 feels more agile, you just have left length, left wheelbase, so this definitely increases the driving fun. Mm but it's not that it would say you don't resemble the driving feeling somehow because, I mean, they still have, you know, something in common, definitely, you know, so a lot of things are actually same building, uh, building, building type and so on, but of course we're based in shorter and so on, so there are some differences, but there are also something that both cars have in common. We also know the all-new Mercedes GLS and also have driven that one. The X7 is a little bit more fun, a little bit sporty to drive. The GLS to me had the softer suspension which sets more on comfort, so that would be different. 
and of course huge differences as I told you earlier with the interior setup especially as for the captain seats where those ones here are more elaborate separated captain seats and the one from the Mercedes GLS are cool definitely also but um, more practical because you can flip them easier but not as separate as those here not that upright and so on you know over some humps yeah, suspension is again doing a nice job keeping it all in comfort and yeah when the roads get a little bit more narrow now you start to think yeah again am i really right here <laughs> so the, that's pretty funny but here this m performance model you can also drive it calm the diesel does have actually a nice sound especially if you go for the sports mode and I mean, you don't feel like, oh, I'm in, in a boring diesel or so on. You get this sound actuator sound, a very sonorous sound here in this interior, and that's pretty cool, actually. So on this part, you don't miss a petrol engine that much, actually. Um, but the real question is, you know, what about the performance when we head on out to the motorway? Well, let's put in the sport mode and see how it handles here in those tighter corners. And wow, you feel the weight definitely, but it's still somehow fun. Um, so you get something of this BMW feeling, yes. But again, you know, the longer I drive the car, um, that's by the way, the other luggage in the rear. That's also a problem because, you know, you have like the um, six and seven, or in this case, then the fifth and the sixth seat flipped and then your luggage is not let's say secured and it's like sliding all over the place showing it early in the interior part but I mean um, not too happy it's actually the first time I have to say about the BMW car that I'm not really oh wait yeah the, the, the X2 with the fixed sport suspension that was also you know too stiff but here somehow not feeling it with the suspension and the wheel setup here today maybe it's the M performance setting for this adaptive damper Maybe it's a 22 inch wheel, or maybe it is exactly this combination that is somehow not, you know, um, that aligned with the car overall. That, that might be it. So now some more countryside roads and, wow, <laughs> this engine is really very powerful at the same time. So far I was driving it rather, you know, in an eco way. So this is the big advantage for the diesel here seven and a half liters on all kilometers so we'll probably go up to eight liters when i drive a little bit faster yes but that's like 30 mpg us 35 mpg uk and that's really amazing for such a big vehicle and you might remember from the other review you know from with the um, six cylinder petrol it was around like 10 to 11 liters on all kilometers so it was all like already in the 20 something mpg areas and then with the v8 petrol that was rather like 14 liters or more kilometers and yeah more in the mbe mpg regions where you have one <laughs> in front um so yeah this one is definitely more fuel saving so that does make a significant difference yet at the same time this one here is as fast as the v8 petrol engine so that's also, you know, that might be a reason to go for that one. And as you hear, the sound is really quite nice. And now in the sports mode, when they get some more feedback from the suspension and also the road is even, then this combination starts to pick up again and is a lot of fun. So I can really conclude that when you have a lot of potholes, yeah, this adaptive M suspension, air suspension with the 22 inch wheels, not the best. But when the road is good and you want to drive a little bit sportier, then it works to make this huge car sportier, especially in combination with the rear axle steering, which makes the ride more agile. And then it's definitely a lot of fun. And you start to forget how big the car is and you start to have just more driving fun like here. And wow, especially in the sports mode, that performance diesel is, wow. I mean, it's, it's going and going and going. This one here, the M50D, also has performance brakes, so they are a little bit more aggressive. I like that, I like when the brakes are aggressive, so good as for that. Of course, the sound not only comes from the actuator, but also from the M Performance Sports as exhaust. And there's also the rear differential lock, the sports differential, 
Yeah, I mean, it's when accelerating out of the corners, but since this one here is always all wheel drive anyway, um, also torque is being sent to the front wheels and then it doesn't make you know, too much of a difference. If you have a differential lock, it would be even more different if there's a car with just one axle driving the wheels. Lovely countryside roads right there and wow. This is now a lot of fun, although it is a big car. But when you are on the brakes and then you go in the corner, then of course you do feel you can't defy physics that this car is pushing you to the outside of the corner. But that's no surprise at all. You can enjoy the sound here also with me. Steering gives very good feedback, especially in the sports mode, a little bit stiffer. So now the stop sign recognition, also with an acoustic warning and the visual warning in the head-up display. And so I promised that to you earlier that now we're heading on to the motorway. Yeah, we had to take you know, uh, yeah, short extra way because of that roadblock. But now there's also a piece where we can have unlimited acceleration, unlimited speed. As I said, 5.4 seconds to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And now we accelerate even further and see really about the performance here in the sports mode. Definitely really cool. So I think we have to leave those cyclists by first and that he leaves me first to drive. Yeah, we leave the cyclist. I mean, cyclist always first. Good. Yeah. It's always good, you know, to just to pay respect to each other here on the road. So, now we're heading on there, and I mean, won't do a, like a full stop with this car, you know. And then the all wheel drive will also distribute it a little bit to the wheels, but there's still a rear wheel bias, of course, with this car. So, sports mode, all the full 400 horsepower now, and we accelerate from about 40 kilometers an hour to whatever. Let's see. and that's 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles per hour and this is like a rolling wall now a rolling wall which is like fast as a bullet and even at those higher speeds the noise insulation remains great here now on the brakes you don't even have to hammer them hard and already we had a 100 again where I just slightly went on the brakes so the braking performance is excellent here and here at it's a normal motorway speed for normal countries <laughs> where it's not, you know, where it's not allowed to drive that fast. It's super silent in here, indeed. that's pretty cool. So you can relax, great noise insulation. Um, so that's also one of the bad things about this car. You can just relax. Again, told you something about the rattling sound earlier. It's like when you drive like 50, 60 or something and then you are really silent. There's something there in the front dashboard. It's with this very car. Maybe it's not with another car. In the other two X7 I've been driving, there was nothing. Maybe it has to do with the diesel combination, that the diesel creates a different vibration, that this one is evoked, or there's something loose, like some plastic piece in the inside the dashboard is often enough to cause something like that. Oh, now like, <laughs> the BMW uh, recognizes the gesture control. Now it's also there, but just slight, you know, just when you're like driving a little bit slower and you're not listening to music, then you do hear it. Now also to a tunnel, you can see how it looks like at night. Head-up display, always great to look at. That does an amazing job. So they're one of the best in the businesses here with BMW. And the overview in this car is still decent. I mean, it's very big, but has those upright structure and you exactly see what's going on just all around you. And yeah, I can stress again. I like the setup we had um, back there in the driving event a little bit better with the normal suspension and at some point also not the maximum size wheels. The petrol was, um, yeah, was it more fun to drive? It's a big question. Usually they are, but in this case here, 
Mm, the sound is quite decent. Yeah, from the V8, the sound is of course even cooler. But then again, you can drive this here with low fuel consumption, if you like. But it has really massive amounts of power. As I said, comparable to the V8, so you won't have less driving fun than here with the, um, you know, with, with, with the diesel. Overall, however, I do somehow feel that the, um, you know, the inline six cylinder petrol engine, that um, that one fits a little bit better to the car, maybe. So, um, yeah, but I mean, you can truly argue for both. So they both have their pros and cons um, at some point. Here again, the biggest advantage is that you can get the fuel consumption way down, as long as you keep it rather steady. If you're using all those 400 horsepower, yeah, then it will also go up, of course. Um, but maybe not as much as with the petrol. And this is also the thing with the diesel, because then it's more efficient. Um, this, you know, the, the variety of the lowest to the maximum consumption is not as big as with the petrol engines there. So, I would like to hear your feedback, and of course, if you're interested in more driving impressions here from the BMW X7, definitely tune in to this other first driving view we had, where we also compared the 6-cylinder with the 8-cylinder petrol. And now to our conclusion for today with the BMW X7, especially here today with the M50D. In general, the X7, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit heavier and not that agile to drive than the X5. It's a new competitor here to the Mercedes GLS. Both of those have also their pros and cons here, definitely with this special captain seat setup, a little bit more exclusive, so to say. But then again, you have this advantage that you cannot fold them all flat. That one then is better with the captain seats of the Mercedes GLS, depends on what you need and what you want. This does, you know, feel still agile to drive. It's fun to drive, yes, at, you know, to a certain point, of course. If you should go for the M Performance model, well, I mean, it doesn't differ that much. Then again, this little bit stiffer suspension with the M setup and the 22 inch wheels, as I said earlier in the driving part, was not too pleasing to me today. I think to this car, the normal setup with the softer air suspension and maybe let's say a 20 inch or maybe maximum 20, 21 inch wheels does fit, to, does fit better to the overall vehicle. So um, yeah, I mean, it still was a great ride and very relaxing and refined and so on. But the other two X7 I was driving, you know, in the other review, you can find those. I found those, you know, a little bit more convincing. What's cool here with the diesel that you can get a low fuel consumption for such a big car. The inline six cylinder diesels BMW is offering, they are really very good. They are, you know, offering good performance, yet they offer a good fuel economy. So that's definitely the biggest thing about this car. And of course the range here, you know, more than 800 kilometers of range without refueling. That's another advantage if you compare them to the Pretrols. The petrols are also powerful, yes, this one here as powerful as the V8 petrol engine, but I think the best combination also for the X5 is to me somehow the inline six uh, cylinder petrol engine. Mm, you somehow feel it fits best to the car overall. Interior space, well, they don't use the space they have, let's say, because everything is also quite voluminous on the inside, so there are other cars which are way smaller, which also have decent space on the interior. But of course, here you have more than enough space and you're quite flexible. So it's a very exclusive riding experience, especially also for the passengers in the rear. Of course, more sustainable materials are lacking, especially for the interior. What's your opinion on this very car and also the variant we tested here today? Tune into the other reviews of the X7 and also see you next time. Thank you so much for being with us here today.